You've heard of aviation pioneers like Chuck Yeager and Neil Armstrong, but these men couldn't get where they did without a vast team of people working to get them in the pilot's seat. Men like Deke Slayton, NASA flight director Gene Krantz, and innumerable others helped guide space exploration into new heights. Hello everybody, this is Alternate History Gaming, and today we are looking at a preview of the game Mars Horizon from Aurich Gaming. Let's see if this game is right for you. After starting a new game, you have to pick your space agency. Each one has different perks and bonuses, or you can make your own. Right off the bat, this lets you know one of the game's core themes, competition. There is no doubt, this is a space race, and the rivalry against the other space agencies is a core component of the gameplay. Now, if you're a fan of space games, the big question that's probably on your mind is, how does this game compare to the current King of Space Sims, Kerbal Space Program? In that game, you are designing probes, spacecraft, and even aircraft, flying them to other planets. Your skill and ingenuity as a designer and pilot is what drives that game forward, and everybody who invests time in that game comes away having learned something about orbital mechanics. One of the biggest criticisms against Kerbal Space Program is its career mode, where players simulate running a space program. The career mode missions quickly become repetitive, and there's no real reason to do that other than gaining the credits needed to buy rockets and do what you actually want to do with the game. Mars Horizon, on the other hand, puts you knee-deep in running a space program. We have lift off. From the get-go, you have to establish your research priorities, design your program's space base, and start creating mission timelines. These missions are where the heart of the gameplay lies. You have to research your payload, build a rocket to get your payload into space, and while in space, you play a mini-game in order to determine if your mission is successful. That is, if your payload even gets into orbit. Resource management is the name of the game here, and if you are able to collect the required resources in the allotted turns, then your mission is a success. If you're unable to collect those needed resources, well then, your mission ends in failure. Sorry, Ham. As your technology level increases, more resources will come into play. And you can use different strategies, like converting one resource into another, to get what's required. It's important to note that your missions aren't happening in a vacuum. Well, they are. But the point is, while you're scheduling your rocket launches, your competing space agencies are constantly working too. If you're the first agency to complete a milestone, then hooray. Everybody else is forced to eat it and bask in your glory. If other agencies beat you to a milestone, well, then you're going to have to spin the news somehow so the public support doesn't dry up for your program. Random events and choices also give you options to flesh out the game more. There are plenty of resources and variables that need to be accounted for and that play off each other. Should I use the brand new, untested rocket design that has a lower chance of success but costs 20 grand less than the tried and true design I have been using? Should I launch at the first opportunity and try to beat the Russians by a month? Or should I wait for my science bonus to accumulate more while having some margin for error? There are so many variables and random events that go on that by the time it's actually time to launch, there's a good amount of tension that's built up. Each launch has a lot riding on it and there's no revert to launch pad option if it goes sideways. A failure can set your program back months and mean a missed goal while your competitors leave you in their engine exhaust. Rocket launches in this game give the same sensation that stockbrokers or slot machine players get in real life. When a mission goes flawlessly, it just adds to the sense of achievement. You've beaten the odds. So will you enjoy this game? Well, that depends. If you play Kerbal Space Program and just want to design and fly whatever you want without worrying about career mode, then you're probably going to be a little underwhelmed by this game. The actual rocket design is pretty thin, at least in the demo. You can research and select the first stage and second stage booster, and that's it. You're not going to be calculating if you have enough delta V for orbital insertion or trimming your apoaps for the perfect polar orbit. What this game does offer is the behind-the-scenes management of a space program. If you wish that Kerbal Space Program had a little more suspense and direction to it, or you relish the political and historical drama behind the actual space race, then this game will scratch that itch for you. Auric Gaming has a history of creating mobile games, 
And to be honest, it's a little surprising. This game is currently scheduled for release on PC and consoles, including the Nintendo Switch, but not mobile. If Auric Gaming wants to put this on mobile, it would help satisfy a lot of Kerbal gamers who can play it on the go. Anyways, thanks for watching. This has been Alternate History Gaming. Now tell me, what's your story?